How y'all doing, good people? Good evening. Second live stream today. Y'all know I'm, I'm out here hustling, man. I'm out here trying to get this content out to you guys. So I appreciate y'all who uh, are going to tap in and, and, and check this video out. Um, I thought what I'd do is walk you guys through the investments that I'm going to be buying with $1,000 per month. Actually, it's going to be $1,000 per week. Let me correct myself. It's actually $1,000 per week. And I'm going to start doing that in October. Matter of fact, next week, I'll start deploying $1,000 a week for the rest of 2023 and all of 2024. And I'm going to walk you guys through the seven investments that I'm going to be buying. Now, these seven investments are going to be all stocks right now. But before we dive into that, I, I just want to make it clear. Y'all know my philosophy on individual stocks. So I'm not doing this video to try to convince you this is what you should be doing. That's not what the video is about. The video is about me sharing with you what my investment strategy is going to be for a small part of my portfolio. Remember, 80% of the money that I invest, guys, 80% of it is going to go into ETFs and index funds, right? That track the S&P 500 and track the total stock market and track sectors. So that's 80% of my money. The 20% of my money, I will invest in individual stocks, and that's what we're going to talk about. Just the 20% of my portfolio, not the 80% is not being invested this way. So I want you guys to understand that because I know some folks will come back and say, well, Richard, you said you don't buy individual stocks. You don't want to be the expert. That's correct. I don't want to be the expert, but you got to remember 80% of my money I'm investing has nothing to do with me being the expert. It has everything to do with companies like Vanguard being the expert when I buy their ETFs and their index funds that track the S&P, track the total stock market, and track sectors. That's where 80% of my money is going. So let me be clear on that. 20% of my portfolio is what I'm going to talk about today. And that's going to be dedicated to these seven stocks that I'm gonna walk you guys through. Now, where did I come up with these seven stocks? Well, several of them I've been investing in for quite some time, but, but, but all seven come out of the S&P 500 index. And these seven stocks are the largest stocks in the S&P 500. They represent about 28% on a weighted average of the S&P 500 total, right? Seven stocks represent 28% of it. And these are the seven stocks that I'm going to be investing that $1,000 a week in every single week for the remainder of 2023 and all of 2024. Why am I doing that? Because I believe, based on what I've seen, it, it will give me an opportunity to really get a good return on my investment, right? Now, these seven stocks are the largest stocks in the S&P 500 index. They're nicknamed the Magnificent Seven. That's the nickname that, that, that people have come up with for these seven stocks. Now, the seven stocks that I'll be discussing with you guys, and I'm gonna tell you why. Number one is Apple. Number two is gonna be Microsoft. Number three is gonna be Meta. Number four is gonna be Amazon. Number five is gonna be NVIDIA. Number six is gonna be Alphabet slash Google, and then number seven is going to be Tesla. So those are the seven stocks 
the only seven stocks that I'm going to buy for the rest of 2023 and that I'm going to buy the entirety of 2024 when it comes to individual stocks. Again, that represents 20% of the money that I'm going to be investing for the remainder of 2023, all of 2024, that represents 20% of the money that I'm going to be investing. 80% of the money that I'm going to be investing will continue to go into ETFs, individual stock, I'm sorry, ETFs and index funds. So we're clear on that. 80% of the money that I'm going to invest going forward, 2023, 2024, 80% will go in ETFs and index funds. 20% will go on these seven stocks, individual stocks. And like I said, they're nicknamed the Magnificent Seven. Why are they nicknamed that? Because of the returns that they're, that they're throwing off. When you take those seven stocks together, they have a 92% ROI this year. Those seven stocks, 92% ROI year to date, right? They represent 28% of the S&P 500, seven stocks, guys. There are other, there are 493 other stocks in the S&P 500 that represent the other 72%, right? But these seven represent 28%. And if we want to break it down even further, got me some notes here with me. I wanted to just break it down a little bit further. So if we're talking about Exactly what's happening with them. You got Apple. Apple represents 7% alone of the S&P 500. Apple. Microsoft represents another 7%. So right there between those two big gigantic companies, they represent 14%. Two companies of the S&P 500. So, so they're heavyweights, man. They're heavy hitters, right? They're heavy hitters all the way down to like Tesla, who represents 2%. But I still look at Tesla as a heavy hitter. It's an up and coming heavy hitter, not where Apple is, not where Microsoft is, but certainly on the come up. So, so Tesla represents about 2% of the S&P 500 when, it, when it's weighted, right? Now, so, so, so that's the reason why I decided, I said to myself, you already been buying Apple. You you already been buying Tesla. Why not go ahead and start every single week buying the other five as well? So now I'm going to form my own little portfolio of seven companies, and I'm going to call it the Magnificent Seven. So when you guys hear me talking about that in the future, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Apple, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Alphabet, NVIDIA, and Tesla. That's the Magnificent Seven. And like I said, from my research, year to day, collectively, collectively, the seven collectively, 92% ROI uh, this year. Now, will it end up that way? I hope so, because I'm going to continue. I'm going to start doubling down on these guys and, and, and I'm going to start buying them. Now, now, most of you guys already know exactly who Apple is, right? We, 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 don't, need to, we don't need to talk about who, who Apple is. Most of you guys know exactly who Apple is. Most of you guys know exactly who Tesla is. Everybody knows who Meta is. That's Facebook, right? That's Facebook. But some of these names, you may not know exactly what these companies do. So let's, let's go ahead and use Google as our friend to help us kind of figure out who some of these other companies are. Let's start with NVIDIA, right? So who is NVIDIA? Let's find out. Let's find out exactly what NVIDIA does. So NVIDIA Corporation, a global corporation that manufactures graphic processors, right? Mobile technologies 
and desktop computers. So they, they're on the hardware side, right? And chip manufacturers as well, right? So NVIDIA is a huge, huge player in this new AI boom. Now, again, I'm no expert in NVIDIA. All I know is, is they're a major, major, major player. And when I looked at NVIDIA, shoot, it was about a year ago. It was about a year ago. NVIDIA was somewhere around $100 a share. Let's see what they're trading at today. This was less than a year ago, guys. Let's see what NVIDIA is trading at today. They're trading at $460 a share, guys. Yeah, 222% ROI year to day just on the video, 222%. So some of you might be saying, well, why in the world are you buying them if they're already at 460 a share? Because I think they're going to go higher. That's why. I think they'll go higher. I think they'll go higher. I think, I think they will go higher. So that's why I want NVIDIA as part of this, right? And it already is a part of the Magnificent Seven, and now you know why. 222% return year to date. That's, that's crazy. Like I said, a year ago, maybe even 15 months ago, it, it was right around $100 a share. And now all of a sudden, boom. Why? Because of this new AI boom, right? So that gives us a little bit of idea who NVIDIA is. For those of you that want to research more and learn more about NVIDIA, go do some research on them, man. Like I said, I'm not here to be the expert on any of these companies. See, I don't worry too much about um, all this information that I need to figure out about NVIDIA. What I, what I want to know is, is it a leader in its industry? Which I believe it is. Right? I believe it is. It's in the Magnificent Seven. It's one of the top seven stocks out of 500 in the S&P in the 500. Right? And, like I said earlier, they're a leader in their industry. So, for me, that's enough. I don't need to know what's on the balance sheet. I don't need to be doing a deep dive into all that. Because, remember, this is only 20% of the money that I'm investing. Right? And it's going to be split between seven companies. Right? So I'm going to take $1,000 a week and I'm going to invest it equally in these seven companies. Right? Now, again, we know who Amazon is. Right? I would hope so. We know who Alphabet is. Right? That's Google. That's who I'm using now to research some of this information. Now, let's go look at some of their stock prices today. We know what NVIDIA is trading at, about $460 a share. Now, let's take a look at Apple. Let's see what Apple is trading at. Apple is trading at $178.72. That's what it was at close. And it's in the red today. It's in the red today. So, and, and who, <laughs> Apple is the most valuable company in the world. The most valuable company in the world. And they're trading in the red today. So, I'm so excited about buying more Apple. Right? So, now let's go take a look at Microsoft. And again, guys, if, if some of you guys are not familiar with who these companies are, just go out and Google. You don't need a guy on YouTube trying to, you know, tell you who these companies are. Just get online, go to Google and type their name in and read and figure out who they are. It's not my goal here to try to spoon feed you every little piece of information about these companies. That's not why I'm, because again, I'm not trying to convince you to buy them. I'm just telling you what I'm getting ready to buy. Remember that. I'm not trying to convince you to buy these. I'm just telling you what I'm buying. Microsoft today, in the green, finished in the green today, $332.64 per share. Let's see what it's doing year to day. 38.84% year to date. Phenomenal, right? Almost 40% ROI year to date in Microsoft. So, Again, Magnificent Seven, one of the big boy companies, right? Now, let's move on to Meta. Let's take a look at Meta. See what Meta's doing. This is another one that I, I, was, I, I fell asleep on last year. I fell asleep on Meta, and I fell asleep on the video. I missed it. I missed it, and I, I, I try not to even think about it because I would have made so much money, but I missed it. But I'm going to be on the front end 
going forward. Net of close today in the green, $321.15. Year to date, 157.46%. <laughs> year to date, guys. Year to date. Meta is killing it. Killing it. Now let's go look at Alphabet. Right? Let's go look at Alphabet. Which is who? That's Google, right? Trading at $139.10. Closed in the green today. Let's see what it's doing year to day. 56.08%. That's what Alphabet is doing year to date 2023. Again, phenomenal performance. Let's go take a look at Tesla. Take a look at old Tesla, one of my favorites. Closed today in the green at $253.92. Let's see what it's doing year to date. $134.89. I'm sorry, 134.89%, not cents. 134.89%. Killing it, man. Now, that one I've been buying all along. You guys know I got a long-term position in Tesla, but I've been buying that one all along, but it's still part of the Magnificent Seven. So, so we're going we gonna to stay there. So we talked about Meta. We talked about NVIDIA. We talked about Microsoft. We talked about Apple. Ah, Amazon, I think that's the last one we need. Let's go look at Amazon. See what they're doing. You guys remember they did a 20 to 1 split when did they do that? Was that 22? I think it was 22 maybe they did the, the, the 20 to 1 split. But today, it closed in the green. $132.55 per share. Let's see what they're doing year to date. 54.45% year to date. So still pretty good. Now you can understand why when you blend all of them, when you, when you average them all out as the Magnificent Seven, you can see why that's a 92% ROI this year, you, you can see. And obviously, the, the leader of the bunch is going to be NVIDIA, right? Over 220% year to date. Again, I missed NVIDIA and I missed Meta because Meta was trading below $100 a share. Below $100 a share, right? I still believe all seven got tremendous upside. Probably the least upside is going to be Apple, in my opinion. Why? Because Apple's the biggest, right? The bigger you are, the harder it is to continue growing at a significant rate, right? So I think Apple has the least amount of upside. That's just my opinion. Again, I could be totally wrong, but that's, that, that's my opinion. I think, I think, personally, I think NVIDIA, even though they're $460 a share, I think NVIDIA and I think Tesla, long-term, has the most upside. But I'm going to participate in all seven of them, right? So I'm going to take that $1,000 per week using the Weeble app. I'm going to use the Weeble app for all of this. And I'm going to show you guys periodically on the Weeble app what the Magnificent Seven portfolio is doing. And if some of you guys want to follow along and, 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 and mirror what I'm doing, you certainly are welcome to do that. Now, again, I'm not telling you to buy these seven stocks. What I'm telling you is, is this is what I'm doing. And I'm trying to walk you guys through how I start from zero and build wealth. Just like in my live stream earlier this morning, when I told you all about when I started from zero on one of my 401ks back in 2012. That was in the video I did this morning where I started with zero and in seven years grew that to like a quarter of a million. And then when I rolled it over to Vanguard, I didn't make no more contributions. And three years later, it added another hundred thousand to it. So I made about two hundred and forty five thousand dollars in, in 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 gain. Right. On one hundred and five thousand dollar investment, I put one hundred and five thousand dollars in and it grew over 10 years to, to 350,000. So I made a $245,000 gain 
on $15,000 a year. That's what I put into that, that investment. I started putting $15,000 a year in, in 2012. And I stopped putting the $15,000 in, in December of 2019. And then no more contributions, but rolled it over and put it into a, a, a Vanguard uh, ETF. It was a sector ETF. It was VGT. I rolled it over and put it into VGT and then boom, in three years, added another gain of 100,000 to that portfolio. Just that, just, that's what I'm doing with this one. I'm doing the exact thing, same thing, right? Now the goal is, is to go throughout 2023, $1,000 a week, and then 52 weeks of 2024, $1,000 a week. And then we're gonna take us, we're gonna, we're gonna track it all through the rest of 2023, and then we'll track it through 2024, and then I'll make a decision. Do I want to continue or do I just, do I want to do something different? We'll, 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 we'll take a look. Now, like I've always told you guys, at least this is the way I do it. I always have a goal. I always have a goal, right? I always have a goal anytime I invest money. I always know exactly what my outcome needs to be, right? So in this particular portfolio right here, the Magnificent 7 portfolio, I'm going to be putting in what? A thousand dollars a week. So I'm not, I'm, you know, in 2024 alone, I'm going to put in about $52,000. And I can't do the math on how many weeks are left in um, 2023. Let, let's just say four weeks in December, four weeks in, in November. Let's just say 10 weeks. So total of $62,000 will go in to this Magnificent 7 portfolio and it's seven stocks and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put 62 grand into it over the next year and couple of months and let's see what it grows to. I feel good about it based on these numbers. Now I know 2023 has been phenomenal because we came off a really bad 2022. So I know some of you might be saying, oh, these numbers are there. That's not indicative of how they'll do going forward because we did so terrible in 2022, which is true. We did. We had a terrible year in the stock market. Not from a, you couldn't, you, you know, it was a great year for me because I bought a lot of discounted assets. But I know from a return standpoint, a lot of the portfolio was given negative returns in 2022. I just continued to buy because they were discounted. So I know 2023, it jumped. But I still believe there's a lot more to go. That, that's, that's my belief. I, I believe these, these seven, this magnificent seven, there's a lot to go. Now, a lot of you might be saying, well, in that, in that kind of, you're buying the S&P, why would you, you want to buy these two? Well, I'm also buying 493 other companies in the S&P. Yeah, these companies represent about 28% of the S&P. But there's still 72% that's represented by the other 493 companies. I still want upside for them too. Because there's no guarantee the Magnificent Seven will perform like they did in 2023 and 2024. I hope they do, but there's no promise they will. So I still want to invest in the broader stock market through the S&P, even though it's sort of redundant to some of you guys. To me, it's not. It's just me carving out the Magnificent Seven and just saying, okay, boom, I'm just going to put a certain amount of money, $1,000 a week in these seven, but I'm not going to disrupt what I normally do from a dollar cost average standpoint in the S&P. Because again, the S&P is the five, top 500 companies in America. They're still 72% represented by the remaining 493 companies. I want upside on that too. I want the broader stock market. One thing you know that this magnificent seven has in common, they're all tech companies. That's one industry, guys. I don't want to be concentrated on 80% of my money in one industry. No, that's the reason I still keep 80% in the broader stock market so that I can get every industry, every sector. That's what the S&P 500 offers. Every industry, every sector. That's what the total stock market offers. Every industry, every sector. And then the Magnificent Seven will be a part of my strategy, my tech strategy. Which you guys know, I told you earlier, I invested in VGT and I continue to invest in VGT. 
made a lot of money in VGT, right? But VGT doesn't have all seven of these companies in it because VGT is strictly information technology. It has NVIDIA in it though, right? And, and NVIDIA is a heavy hitter. I've already told you that it's a heavy hitter, but I think it's still got room to grow. So I'm jumping in, right? I'm jumping in. And of course, you know, Apple's most valuable company in the world, Microsoft, another highly valuable company as it relates to companies in the world. And then I think Tesla's up and coming. I like Meta. I, I don't know how much more upside Meta has, but I'm here for the ride. Let's give it, let's say 14 months, maybe 15 months to see how this does. We'll track it though. I'm, I'm gonna let you guys know firsthand exactly what's going on. Guys, if you're in the chat, if you're in the live, if you're in the video, hit that thumbs up for me. I forgot to ask you guys to do that at the beginning of the, of the video. Please hit the thumbs up for me if you don't mind. I really would appreciate it. Um, just for the information to get out to more people, hitting the like button helps the YouTube algorithm really spread the message, right? And again, this is not a convince you channel. My, 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 my goal here is not to convince you guys to go out and do something you're not comfortable with. That's not the, the intent. The intent is to just be transparent and tell you guys what I'm doing because people ask me all the time. You guys ask me all the time, Richard, what are you investing in? How do you determine what you want to invest in? See, I'm not one of these guys that's going to sit down and look at every balance sheet, every income statement, look at all these charts, listen to a hundred different guys on, on TV, online, and then try to determine what I'm going to invest in. That's not how I invest. No. I go find the very best of the very best in every industry, especially in the industries that I like. I go find the very best companies in those industries, right? And that's what I look at. I look at big boy blue chip and I look at their historical performance. That's all I look at. I don't need to be going in there looking at everything in their investor relations section of their website. I'm not doing all that. I'm not saying you don't need to do that. I'm just not going to do it. That's a waste of my time. All I need to know is, are they big boy blue chip companies who have a proven track record, a historical proven track record of multiplying money? That's good enough for me. And then I dive in, right? And I keep them rolling. And that's it. That's the investment strategy for me, right? And I've been doing that for the last, what, 25 years. And I've done really well. I do it all on my own because I don't try to be the expert. I lean on, you know, proven, historically proven companies when I'm doing individual stocks. Now, individual stocks is not my forte. I'm no expert. I am doing this because I believe these seven, these magnificent seven is going to multiply some money for me. And again, it's not a big part of my portfolio. It's going to probably represent, I mean, it's, it's $62,000, guys. That's not significant in the big scheme of things in my portfolio. It, it's, it might be very significant for you in your portfolio, but for me, it's not. It's a, it, it, it's a very small part, right? It's, it, it's not even five, it's not even 3% of my portfolio, right? So I'm going to take that 3% or less and dump it into the Magnificent Seven. I'm going to continue every single month, though, dollar cost averaging into my favorite ETFs, and my favorite index funds, right? I'm going to continue doing that like I've been doing all along. That will not be disrupted, right? I'm just going to take this other extra money, this other extra $1,000 a week and put it in the Magnificent Seven because I believe it, it, it represents an opportunity for me to, you know, double my money. I, I think I can double my money in 15 months. I think I can go from 62 to 125 in, in 15 months. That's the goal. See, I always have a goal in mind. I want to double my money once in 15 months. See if I can do it. Let's see if the Magnificent Seven can pull that off. Now, I know a lot of folks are thinking, oh, it'll never happen. I don't, I don't think like that. See, I'm more of an optimist, right? But backed by what? Performance. Right now, you're today, it ain't one of these companies in the Magnificent Seven that are doing less than a 30% ROI. Not, not none of them. All of them are doing better than that. Year to date, 23. I don't see what's going to really change in 24. Unless something breaks in the economy that forces rates to stay higher for longer. Or it forces some other, you know, some other trigger, right? If not, I think I got a good chance of doubling my money in 15 months. 
14 months, right? So I'm putting in 62. The goal is, is to do what? Have 125. That's a one time. I want to, I want to double it, right? Now the rule of 72 says I can double my money every seven years if I get at least a 10% return. Right? That's the rule of 72. If I can get at least a 10% return, I can double my money every seven years. I don't got seven years. I need to double my money in 15 months. That's why I'm going this route with these magnificent seven. Because based on what they've done in 23, there's a good opportunity. History can repeat itself. And if it does, I'm going to double my money probably next year. That's what I'm banking on, right? So $1,000 a week. That's the challenge. I'm using the Weeble app. So if you guys are interested in following me on that journey and, and perhaps even jumping in on it yourself. And again, I'm not telling you to, but if you want to, you can. It's your money. You make the decision. But I'm using the Weeble app. Everything is going to be purchased on the Weeble app. Link down in the description box for the Weeble promotion, guys. Weeble is going to give you up to 12 free stocks. When you open your Weeble brokerage account, put any amount of money in. They're going to give you up to 12 free stocks. Who knows? One of those stocks or a fractional share could be one of the Magnificent Seven. I don't know. You got to sign up to find out, right? I don't know. But that's where I'm going to be making the investments through the Weeble app. Now, I know a lot of you guys are already part of the team, right? You've already downloaded the Weeble app. You've already gotten your free stock. You already put money in the account and you're investing. That's wonderful. So you'll, you'll be able to follow along pretty easily, right? And if you want to do a smaller portion of the Magnificent Seven like I'm doing using the Weeble app, remember guys, you got fractional share trading on the Weeble app. So you don't need to put in $1,000 per week like I'm doing in the Magnificent Seven. You can put in as little as $5 per week in each one of these seven stocks and buy a fractional share of it. Or you could put $10 a week or you could put $20 a week, whatever your number is. But you can do fractional share trading on that Weeble app with as little as five bucks. So you can be building your own Magnificent Seven portfolio Whatever your budget will allow you to be able to invest on a weekly basis, but that's what I'm going to be doing on a weekly basis. I'm putting in a thousand bucks every single week for the next 14 to 15 months. The goal is, is to double it, right? To double it, double my money in that 14 to 15 month span. Now, I don't know if that'll happen, right? I'm, but that's what I'm doing. And that's what I'm going to be using the Weeble app for. So like I said, again, if, you, if you're new and you have not, or, or, or if you've been a subscriber on my channel or a frequent watcher of my channel and you've been thinking, eh, I'm on the fence about this Weeble thing, rest assured, guys, I use Weeble every day. I'm getting ready to put my $62,000 into the Weeble app over the course of the next 15 months to buy the Magnificent Seven. So if you're interested in doing that with me, there's a link down in the description box. Click on that Weeble link. Open up that new Weeble account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. Also, if you're brand spanking new and you don't know how to use the Weeble app, just send me a DM on Instagram at richardfain28. Just say, hey, Richard, open the Weeble account. Put some money in it. Send me that tutorial video that'll walk me through how to use the Weeble app so I can start building my Magnificent 7 portfolio. And, and whatever amount of money you can afford to put in, put in. Again, it's a 15-month investment on my end, maybe longer, just depending upon how well it's doing. But the goal is, is I want to double it one time. How do I know I'll double it? I don't. I don't know if it'll double. But history tells me. I just shared the history with you guys. History tells me it will. Right? The year-to-date 2023 history says it will. So I'm, I'm hanging my hat on that, right? Without risk, there's no reward, right? Without risk, there's no reward. I'm willing to risk. I have a certain risk tolerance that I'm willing to go up to in order to get that reward. 
No risk, no reward. Let's see, I, I don't believe these, the Magnificent Seven poses any, any downside to me. I don't believe that, especially not with companies like Apple, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Alphabet, NVIDIA, and Tesla. Come on, guys. Seven of the biggest tech companies in the world, right? Seven of the biggest tech companies in the world are in the Magnificent Seven. I'm really, really excited about it. I hope you guys decide it's something that might work for you. I hope you decide to do some form of it, right? Or create your own Magnificent Seven. Better yet, you don't have to. You don't have to do what I'm doing. Create your own. The goal is is do something. If you want to build wealth, you got to take yourself off the sideline and put yourself in the game, right? You got to take yourself off the sideline and put yourself in the financial game. How do you do that? You got to figure out what your risk tolerance is, right? You got to figure out what your risk tolerance is when it comes to investing, right? You got to have a long-term hold pattern, right? Now, this one is going to be a little more short-term for me, but it could turn into a long one, depending upon how it does. But for more than, more than anything for me, it's an experiment, right? Because like I said, it represents a very small portion of the money I have to invest, about 3% of it, right? So it's a very 97% of my money is going somewhere else long-term. This is like 3%, and it's going to boom. It's going to go in to the Magnificent Seven. I believe I can double the money in 15 months based on history, right? So we'll see. We'll see. But back to what I was saying, got to get yourself off the sideline and put yourself in the game, right? If you want to build wealth, right? I can't just talk a good game, right? I can't just talk a good game, right? That old saying, you know, you got to walk the walk if you're going to talk the talk. If you're going to talk the talk, baby, you got to walk the walk. If you say you want to be free, back it up. Put some action behind what you're saying, right? People say a lot of things, but very few of them do anything, right? Don't be one of those people that just talk. Be a doer, not a talker. Too much talking going on to be a doer, right? And this is an opportunity to build wealth, at least using paper assets, the stock market, right? This is one of the ways you can build wealth. But I think it's one of the, 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 the least amount of money ways, right? If I gotta go buy real estate, I, got, I need some money to buy real estate. I need a down payment. I need good credit. I need verifiable income. So I don't need any of that if I'm just building me a magnificent seven portfolio. All I need is some money to put into it, but I don't need to have good credit, right? I don't need to have down payment, a bunch of down payment money. I don't need to have verifiable income through tax returns to buy. I don't need any of that, guys. That's why I'm telling you, paper assets is, 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 is the easiest way to start building wealth that I know of. It really is, followed by a business. And then real estate is probably third because you need money to get in real estate. You need good credit. You need verifiable income to get into real estate. In most cases, you don't need any of that for the stock market. And in most cases, you don't need any of that for a business, right? But I think the stock market right now is in a position where we're still in a bear market in my opinion. Again, I'm no expert here. I'm just giving you guys my opinion. You, you can disagree with it. Go out and do your own homework, make your own YouTube video, and poof, there you go. You got your opinion out there. But, but it's my YouTube video, so I'm giving you my opinion, right? My opinion is there's so much more opportunity to build wealth before this next bull market starts. We ain't in it yet. We ain't in it. It's coming. It's coming. That's why I'm building this Magnificent Seven today. And that's why I'm still doubling down monthly dollar cost averaging 97% of my money over here into ETFs and index funds and sectors, right? I'm going to keep doing that, 97% of my money. But I'm going to take this 3% and put it in the Magnificent Seven. I'm curious to know how it'll do. I think it'll do well. Question is, what are you going to be doing? 
2023 is coming to an end, guys. What have you done all this year? For the first 10 months of the year, what have you been doing? Hopefully you ain't just been talking. Hopefully you've been doing some doing, some taking action. Hopefully you've, you've, you've experienced this crazy run up in the market in 23. Hopefully you've been buying assets like I've been asking you to be considering since January of this year. Go back and look at all my videos, guys. There's no secret. I talk about the same thing, and it's going to be every single day, building wealth. That's all I'm going to talk about. I ain't talking about nothing else. So if you come in here for something other than building wealth, you in the wrong channel. Wrong channel. All, I can, all I'm concerned about is getting to freedom and helping other people get to freedom. That's all this channel is about. It's not here to entertain you. No, it's not. It's here to give you nuggets, financial nuggets. Just like I just gave you if you were listening. But I know some of y'all will get in the comments and be, oh, oh that, I, I'd never invest in those. Then don't. Simple. Don't. I don't care. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to lose one second of sleep if you don't invest in the Magnificent Seven. I don't care. All I care about are those that want a way to get to wealth. Now they know how they can get there if they want to. They got to do their own research and figure it out, but they know what I'm doing. Maybe that is something that excites them. Maybe it gets them to thinking, shoot, if Richard built his Magnificent Seven, let me build mine. Yep, I can't do $1,000 a, a, a week, but I can do $50 a week. And then maybe I just keep building that up every, every month. Maybe I start out with 50 a week. And at some point, if I can develop me a side hustle, if I can get me a second secondary income, if I can cut out some of these unnecessary expenses out of my budget, maybe I can move that up to $150 a week. Who knows? Some of you might say, you know something? $1,000 a week is too small for me. I'm going five grand a week. I'm going 10 grand a week. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Just make sure whatever you're investing in, it has a historical track record of multiplying money. It has a, it has a historical track record of performance. Right? That's all we can do, guys. Anytime we invest our money in the stock market, there is a risk of losing it. But see, I don't worry about losing money in the stock market. I don't. Because I have a certain risk tolerance for it. And I understand that Every bear market is followed by a bull market. Go do the research. This ain't something I'm making up, guys. Every bear market in the history of the stock market has been followed by what? A bull market. Bull market coming, guys. I'm telling you. Same thing happened, man, in 2008 when it comes to the market. Not real estate piece, but the market. Declined in value terribly. But guess what happened, though? Over the course of three or four years, it worked its way back. And then all of a sudden, man, whew, through the roof, right? I told, I, like I said earlier, I told you about, I started in 2012, guys, with one of my 401ks. I had just changed jobs in 2012 to, to a new bank. And I said, boop, jumped in the 401k with no money. And then I started getting $15,000 a year taken out pre-tax. So every two weeks, divided by whatever it is for however long I did it for the, for the year, they would take, but at the end of the year, it totaled 15, 15K. The reason I take that is because, see, we were coming out of that bear market in 2012. We were coming out of it. We were coming out of the bear market, getting ready to do what? Go back into the bull market. And guess what happened? I rode that wave all the way to 2019 and made a ton of money. From 2012 to 2019, my investment of $105,000 grew, grew, right? It grew to $250,000. So $145,000 in growth in those seven years. Riding that wave up, right? From 2012 to 2019, putting $15,000 a year in. That's all I did. 
And then it happened a second time in 2020. Remember the pandemic hit. Stock market lost 30, 30, not, not lost, but declined by 30 to 35% because of pandemic fears. March and April of 2020, people were panicking, selling everything, getting out. Why? Because the 1% started pumping that propaganda out. People start selling. Retail investors like you and I who didn't know no better, we started selling. We thought it was the end of the world. Guess what happened though? Around June, corrected itself. S starting to correct itself. So what did I do? I said, oh, uh-uh-uh, I'm not gonna miss this opportunity. So I, I took that 250,000 that I had rolled over from my last banking job, I took the whole $250,000 and I put it in Vanguard Information Technology VGT, September of 2020. Left it in there for three years. Made another 100K, just like that. No, no contributions, but I had a risk tolerance. I had looked at VGT and I saw what VGT was getting ready to do. I saw what the rest of the market was getting ready to do. So boom, I jumped in. And the rest of the money that I had was in the market already. That was just sitting on the sideline because I had just rolled it over. My point is this, guys. You got to be in the market, not trying to sit around in time. You got to get in the market. You got to get in the market if you want to participate. We don't know when the, the home run days are coming. We don't know when it goes to the moon days are coming. But if I'm in the market constantly every single day, I'm not going to miss it. But if I'm right here trying to time it, I'm going to probably miss it because we'll never time it right. So you got to be in the market constantly, guys. The, your money has to be in the market so you don't miss the best days of when the market really jumps. Because it's not going to jump 365 days out of the year. It might jump 20 days out of that 365, but those 20 days are monsters. And if you miss them 20 days, you're just you're stuck like Chuck. You are stuck like Chuck if you miss those 20 days. But if you're in the market 365 days a year, you don't miss them. That's what I try to do. I just try to be in the market 365 days a year. Whenever the market's open, I want my money in it. So be prepared for what's coming. Now, I know there's a lot of talk about this and that and what can happen. Nobody knows. All I can tell you is I just go over what the history of the stock market has done. Every bear market is followed by a bull market. So I know at some point in the future, we got to have another bull market. My job while I wait on the bull market is to buy as many paper assets at a discount as I can. That's the job. Period. That's my job. To buy as many paper assets at a discount. Collect them. Hoard them. Get the little dividend if they want to pay me a little dividend. Reinvest that too. Because once that new bull market gets here, they're going to go from trading at a discount to trading at a premium. If they're big boy, blue chip, proven companies and proven ETFs, proven index funds. And that's all I invest in. I don't invest in anything that ain't proven with a historical track record of multiplying money. I don't invest in it. Right? But over the last 25 years, that strategy has served me well. You better come up with a strategy. It don't have to be my strategy. Figure out your strategy. You better figure out something, though. You better figure out something. Because y'all already know, ain't nobody going to save you. That little Social Security check they're going to give you when you get to 62 years old ain't going to save you, guys. I had a gentleman email me today. He said, yeah, Richard, I watched your video from a couple days ago when you were talking about the Social Security thing. And he said, you know something, man? You hit that thing right on the, the nail on the head. He said, you wasn't lying at all because I'm 62. And it ain't enough to take care of me. I try to tell y'all guys, this Social Security thing, it's not there to be your primary source of income. I don't know why we think it is. It's not. It's supplement. You better already have some income from somewhere else coming in and it just supplements that income. It's not there to be your, the only money you got to live. Now, I know a lot of Americans use it that way, but that's not what it's for. And again, these people don't owe you nothing. The 1% don't owe you nothing. Who's to say it's going to be Social Security when you, when you get to that age? Who knows? 
We do have a $33 trillion debt in the United States. It's a lot. It's a lot. We already don't make enough money to pay the debt right now. Now, again, that doesn't mean that we're finna collapse or anything. I'm just, I'm just trying to get you to understand things change. Social Security could change. It could, it could change for the better. It could change for the worse. But I do not want to be here at 62 years old, depending on the United States of America to take care of me. I, I, I don't. United States of America is a great country, and, I, and I'm privileged to live here. But I don't want to be dependent upon them to take care of me. The only way I don't depend on them to take care of me is I got to get out here and build wealth. I done told y'all guys, no one's going to save you. There's no one coming to save you. You better save yourself. So you can joke, you can make goofy comments all you want. Go ahead. Go ahead. But one thing I know, I'm not going to be a grown man surfing the web, making stupid comments on another man's videos. I just think that's stupid. Especially when you're probably broke. That's for all the trolls. You're probably broke. It'll be better use of your time figuring out a way to build wealth for yourself so that you don't have so much time to troll other people's videos and make stupid comments. Because all that tells me is you got nothing else better to do with your time. Because anybody that's out here hustling and doing their thing, they ain't got time to do that. Don't have time. They don't have, the, they don't have enough energy to do that. Their focus is on what? Positivity. Their focus is on getting the wealth, getting the freedom. That's what you should be focused on. But some of you are focused on the wrong things. Why? Because your life is in turmoil. Your life is in turmoil, but it doesn't have to be. You got to reprogram yourself. I told you guys, all that negative, you letting in your filter system, it's coming out. All going to come out of you is negative. If you all, only thing you let in is negative... All that's going to come out of you is negative. And it's going to affect your building wealth. Because see, you're going to be so focused on negative, you'll never build wealth. See, building wealth is about positive. In order to build wealth, you got to have some positive energy, man. you got to have some positive thoughts. you got to be a self-motivator. you got to be a self-starter. you got to be a producer instead of a, 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 you know, a consumer. Right? Who has time to get on YouTube or get on Instagram or get on any social media platform and spend their whole day being negative? Who does that? That must be a sad life. It must be a sad life. And I'm going to pray for you, though. I'm going to pray for you because I think um, you need some type of intervention. But for those of y'all who are positive and doing what you need to do, in order to get yourself the freedom, kudos to you. You're doing the right thing. Keep hustling. Keep believing in yourself. Keep making, keep, keep making money. Keep that money. And then multiply it. Make it, keep it, multiply it. I've just shared with you one of the ways I believe I'm going to multiply mine in 2020. The remainder of 2023 the remainder of, um, I'm sorry, full 2024, right? I've already shared with y'all my strategy for the Magnificent Seven. I hope some of you guys join me. Like I said, the Weeble link is down in the description box because that's what I'm going to use, just the Weeble app. I'm going to put 62 grand into the Weeble app over the course of the next 14 months. And at the end of that 14 months, 15 months, whatever it is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys what the portfolio did. Now, we'll be, we'll be getting some, up, some progress reports, but I'm not going to be talking about it every single day. We'll get some progress reports throughout. But the goal is, is to show you guys at the end of that period, so by the end of next year, 2024, show you guys the portfolio on the Weeble app, do a full video about it, and show you what progress I made if I hit my goal which is doubling my money. I want 125K. I'm putting in 62K. I want 125K. That's the goal. So that's, that's, that's where I'm going with this. I appreciate you guys stopping by, man. You just don't know how much. You guys have always been great to me. 
my, 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 my OGs, the folks that follow me and, 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 and hit the thumbs up and, and watch the videos and understand what I'm trying to do here, right? It, 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 the intent is for it to be repetitive, guys. You, you do understand that, right? The intent is for it to be repetitive. I, I'm not out here trying to create a brand new everything every time I come on this camera. I'm not trying to do that. I let the other guys do that or other gals do that if that's what they want to do. I'm not knocking them. My goal here is not to be an entertainment channel. My goal is to be a, a, a financial resource for you. And the only way I can make sure you understand what my financial resources are that I'm offering you is, is by talking about them. I, I'm only going to talk about financial freedom. I'm only going to talk about real estate. I'm only going to talk about the stock market. And I'm only going to talk about businesses and side hustles. Right? That's it. Those are the four main topics that I'm going to talk about every single day, 365 days a year. Because I know for some of you, you appreciate that because you need to hear it more than once. You need to hear it, you know, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm not trying to recreate the wheel. I'm just trying to show you all a wheel that's worked for me. And if you want to duplicate that wheel, great. Or go out and create your own wheel. That's on you. But I'm not trying to create a new wheel. I'm just going to show you the wheel that has worked for me. And then you can pick and choose what parts of that wheel you want to take or you leave them all. Right? And if you're not interested in that, you, there are millions of other people out there making financial content. My goal is, 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 is not to convince you. My goal is to just give you financial resources. You can either take them or leave them. That's on you. So thank you guys for listening tonight. I'm going to get ready to wrap this thing up and and, and finish up the rest of my night. Couple things before I, I get out of here, though. You guys know I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, probably another live stream, maybe a, 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 an edited video as well. My goal is to make as much content as I can, guys. My goal is to reinforce uh, these financial behaviors, uh, reinforce these financial principles that I believe in every single day on this YouTube channel. And that's what I'm gonna do, right? I'm, that's all I'm going to do. So, so, so I hope you guys continue to follow and rock with me. Hit that thumbs up for me. Hit it a thousand times. I told y'all that's extremely important. So if you can do that for me, I would appreciate it. Also, share the video. You know, share the video with somebody in your network. Um, it would be really great if you could share it with somebody, you know, share it with five people. Just, just think about five people that you want to send it to and then just email it out to them or send them the link some kind of way. Right. That would be fantastic, man. The more people we can we can we can tap into, the more opportunity we have uh, to 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 change financial lives. And I say we because you guys are a part of this. I can't do this alone. I need your help. I can't do this by myself, nor do I want to do it by myself. I want a team and I look at you guys as family and my team. So if you guys are rocking with me and you're on my team, number one, hit that like button for me. And then number two, share the video with at least five people. Just send it out to them and tell them they need to watch it. Because that's what family does, right? That's what teammates do. We help each other. So I thank you. I appreciate you. And remember this. People first. Money second. People first. Money second. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, and you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never, 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 never stop believing in yourself. And before I sign out of here, I saw one super chat. Thank you very much for that individual that hit me with that super chat. I didn't, hey man, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you more than you know. Thank you for, for hitting me with the super chat. Peace.